Hallelujah. Very quickly. Luke in chapter number 11. We'll read verse 53 and 54. Luke 11, 53 and 54. Watch out for her life. If you're a witch, go and stand in her way. If you don't die, come and collect money from me. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it. Go and try. If you are alive, come to me and collect money. Hallelujah. Luke eleven fifty three and 54. Please pay attention and try and write down some few things. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to assail him vehemently. In other words, they were troubling Jesus seriously. And to cross-examine him about many things. Verse 54. Lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him seeking to catch him in in what please focus please seeking to catch him in what one more time please seeking to catch him in what he might say not something he might do but something he might say I heard the beautiful things about the 21st year. You know, it's, it's a, I think when I was 21, I, 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 okay, it was 20 when I pastored my first church in Redeem. So a lot of you are already qualified to be pastors if you are 21. Amen. The benefits, the empowerment, the emancipation, the new things, the allowances, benefits you can be to enjoy. I'm going to make some three general statements and before we pray tonight. I'll make some three general statements and tell you one or two things that you're going to need for the journey. And number one is the fact that anywhere there are benefits, there must be responsibility. Anywhere there are benefits, there must be what? Responsibility. In other words, my dad, when I was 18 years, my dad sent me a message. He bought me a card, the first card ever and only card probably and wrote there a note and one of the things he said is that now you are 18 no more excuses anything you do or say i will take it as being deliberate in other words you can't hide under youthful exuberance anymore you have now become a man anywhere there are benefits there must be responsibility now it becomes an aberration for you to want benefits without responsibility and that's very typical of africans you want benefits without responsibility you want a wife that has no mother or you want a husband that has no mother so you have mother-in-law problems oh yeah you want a wife that has no issues she's just everything and anything i mean while you are a package you want, you want a meal that will just appear and no one has to go to the market. We want benefits without responsibility. Small wonder, a lot of us have become, many, many folks have become victims of false prophets and false folks. Why? Anywhere you look for benefits without responsibility, you are dealing with your cult. God's own design. Is there anywhere there are benefits? There must be responsibility. When God gives me a wife, there are some benefits. If there are benefits you're enjoying from your wife, there are responsibilities in her that you must take up. It is standard. If there are benefits you have in your husband, there are responsibilities in him you must take up. If there are benefits in ministry, there are responsibilities you must take up. Anywhere there are benefits there must be responsibility god created man put man in the garden now check this out the house this guy had the house adam he had the house he didn't build all right and it was a garden he had food that he did not grow 
God did all that. All right? He had a wife he didn't pray for. God did all that. And God only gave him two things. Told him his benefits. This place becomes your house. The whole place is your place. Every food in it, anything in it, you can eat. All the trees you can eat, your benefits. But responsibility says you must steal the ground. You must take care of the garden. I've done my job. I don't maintain. God is not into the business of maintenance. No, 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 no. God is not in the business of he will give you what you ought to have. If you like, don't maintain it. God does not maintain anything. He does not maintain grace. He does not maintain blessings. He doesn't maintain anything. Can you be quiet, please? Thank you. He doesn't maintain anything. He only maintains nothing. Doesn't maintain anything. So God will give you a wife. Whose job is it to maintain her? Husband. God will give you a husband. Whose job is it to maintain him? Wife. God will give you children. Whose, whose business is it to maintain them? No, Father. Father. We get that wrong. Father. No parents. There is no place in the Bible where the God commanded the woman to train up the children. Every duty of the family is the man's duty. The, God only created the woman to help him in all the duties. Ephesians 6 2. Fathers, train up. There is no place where mothers are meant to train up the children. So if my wife is doing it, she's helping me, and it's her job to help me. But for me to sit down and say, is the woman's response to train the children? That is culture, not scriptures. And we will not get the result of God when we follow culture. Stay with me. So, responsibility says there are things you must do. And there are things you must not. That's what it means to be responsible. Things you must do and things you must not do. In other words, you must steal the garden. Number two, you must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of Good and evil, right? Anywhere there's responsibility, right? Anywhere there are benefits, rather, there must be resp number two, general statement. Number two, general statement. Everything that has value in life is guided by an obstacle. Everything, not one remains. Everything in life that has value is guided by. So nobody will volunteer for your breakthrough. Your breakthrough is your responsibility. In other words, brethren, grace will bring you into God, but grace is not responsible for how much you grow in God. Grace's job is to save you. Grace's job is to bring you into relationship with God. But grace is not responsible for how you grow in God. It is your responsibility. Uh, a lot of folks bring kids to church and they expect the church to do, to train up the child in one hour or two hours of service. It is not church's responsibility to raise up children. It is your duty, sir. anything in life now if that's not the case then everybody will be rich but everybody will not be rich if that's the case then everybody will be anointed in the spirit but everybody will not be anointed in quote because you all have an anointing once you're born again the holy ghost is there you all have an anointing i'm talking about anointing for service being able to tell the devil to shut up being able to move mountains being able to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. Being able to cast out demons. Being able to do the work of ministry. God using it to, for signs and wonders <coughs> and diverse manifestations. Anything in life that has value is guarded by 
an obstacle. And so if you want what has value, you must be ready to deal with obstacles. That's why there's no place in scripture say, where the Bible says you will not have problems. Oh no. In fact, the Bible actually tells us, brethren, that many are the of the uh, so how many will be the afflictions? Many. But the, the Lord delivers them from all of them. Not one of them will overwhelm you. Why? Each one of them is coming to make you better. Stronger, better. Not one of them. Say, God did never told us in scripture that the devil would not come. But his own job is to come and his own job to make sure he fails. Everything that has value in life is guarded by an obstacle. Finally, number three, general statement. There is nothing that God created that is absolute in nature. Nothing. God created is absolute in nature. I'm taking you somewhere. There is nothing God created that is absolute in nature. In other words, brethren, anything that exists, visible or invisible, can change. Situations can change. Relationships can change. Your physiology can change. Your medical condition can change. Uh, your relationship can change. Your career can change. Anything and everything can change. And you can change. I get wary of folks that say, well, that is who I am. Take me or leave me. It simply means that you don't understand life. Oh, no. Everything that God created, there is not one that is absolute in nature. Everything can be altered. In other words, I can get a tree and make paper. I can get apple and make apple juice. And there's a reason God did not create us from stone. He didn't hewn us from stones. He made us from mud. And if you understand mud, brethren, you will know that the Bible says God told Jeremiah, go to the house of the potter. When he got there, he saw that the potter was already rusting and a walk on the wheel. The Bible says he got there, it was a finished work. But because it was mud, the man marred it and created something else. Why? It is not absolute in nature. And that's why, sir, brethren, modern medical lunacy says you can enter a medical lab physiologically as a he, come out as a she. Why? There's nothing that God created that is absolute in nature. It can be altered. It can be altered. Now, why am I saying this? Let me start from the last one. I'm saying this because what we are seeing of you is not the best version of you yet. How do I know there's still more to you? Because you are alive. Because you are alive. There is a revised standard version that we are yet to see. After that, there's a new international version that we are yet to see. After that, there's an amplified version that we are yet to see. But brethren, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever it is that has hindered you from expressing the fullness of God's grace and purpose in your life, that thing will not follow you home tonight in Jesus' name. Church, we are at a time, brethren, Mother God said, at 21, you are empowered. You are empowered, but now you are... There are three feasts. There are about seven feasts that the Jews observe in scriptures. But there are three of them that they must all go to Jerusalem to go and observe. These three are pilgrimages. Number one is the Passover. You know the story of the Passover? When they were in Egypt and it was time for deliverance. And the blood of the lamb had to be at the lintel of the door. And the spirit of death passed them over. Number two is the tabernacle, the feast of tabernacles. That was a feast to remember how they were moving from place to place in the wilderness. Place to place. They would tabernacle here, then they will move again. 40 year journey in the wilderness. Then the third one that they must travel for is the feast of first fruits. Feast of first fruits is, simply shows that that is the one they, the first time they ate of the harvest of the promised land. One was in Egypt. For deliverance out of Egypt. One was to help them journey all through the wilderness. One is after they have entered the promised land. May I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That whichever one of you, whichever area of life 
that you are still being held bound as it were you are still in egypt god almighty through the blood of the passover he will bring you out tonight in the name of jesus now for me the, the greatest concern is the folks who are still in some form of spiritual prison spiritual prison I, i'm not that that wouldn't it won't suffice to say it has only to do with bondage oh no the greatest bondage is you not knowing who god is to you and who you are to god that is the greatest bondage galatians 4 1 the bible says if the head of a home is but a child it's nothing better than a slave why you don't know who god is what god has planned for you when you have no idea what this relationship is and you are not growing in it brethren it's a terrible thing terrible thing for me the greatest impartation today is that god will give you the spirit of knowledge and revelation in the knowledge of him that god will help you know and these are some of the things that the holy spirit does Two works of the Holy Spirit we must re-emphasize over and over in our life. Number one is the fact that it bears witness. Bears witness. The Bible says, uh, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, how do you know Jesus died on the cross? You were not there when he died. How do you know Jesus resurrected on the third day? You were not there when he resurrected. But brethren, I know it more than I know my name. Uh, it is more real to me than my own existence that jesus died for me on the cross that jesus exists to the right of the heavenly father why do i know there's a witness that witness is real so when you find yourself brethren the things that you believed in god you suddenly start finding yourself questioning it who created god you are losing witness that is the greatest evidence of backsliding when your mind cannot drift to places where you are assured before, the Holy Spirit has taken a back seat. You put him in the back burner. Brethren, and it is, you see, when, what the witness does for you, it gives you confidence. The Bible says, in returning and in rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in confidence will your strength lie. Jeremiah 30, sorry, Isaiah 30, 15. Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. What does that mean, brethren? If I am going to stand, the devil shows up today, and I will stand up to him, brethren, it's because I know Jesus is alive. I don't need any prophet to tell me Jesus is alive. And brethren, I know he's not just alive. He's seated by the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Jehovah El Ephesi, God of special effect, is not going to just show up. He will show up to show off. It is a witness. When that witness becomes weak in the life of a believer, your situation becomes, the problem becomes bigger than your God. It is that witness that makes Jesus real. What you need as you enter into this period and this position of responsibility, Jesus must become more real than anything. Maybe he's where God will want me to stop. He must become more real. Brethren, Jesus must become more real. I who went to a village to preach, and the 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 what they call it, the 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 priests of their God, whatever, and it's don't those gods don't exist. If you don't know it, don't go there. He said he was going to perform some magic and put himself in a bottle. I told him, I said, if you go in and you're able to come out, Jesus is dead. He did it. He went away. If he had gone in, he won't come out. Why? But I don't need a prophecy to know my Jesus is alive. There is no situation that is too big that will make me think that he's not alive. Because what makes me know he's alive is beyond me. His name is the Holy Ghost. When you know that Jesus is alive. And brother. All that we all know, brethren, that Jesus is alive. Because a lot of us are stuck with the humanity of Jesus. This is a season. Responsibility says you must sit down, study to show yourself approved. 
a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly now dividing the word of truth. We are now going to leave the elementary things of faith and move. It's time for bones. It's time to send you to go and pray for someone who is afflicted. 21 years, 10 years, 12 years, it's time for you. Someone is sick. The, the person has whatever. Tell that usher to go. That is the season we are entering in. Well, I can tell you better. To be a worker when I was pastoring, you either fall in or fall out. There's no measure. You either survive it or you don't. Because you don't, I don't expect cases coming to me. Oh, no. Only when someone had died. My ushers can handle it. The only time, I can't even remember ever. I've, I've prayed for people. I've seen all sorts of miracles. But I can't remember in any of our crusades where someone who had no eyeball. I've seen those folks who had eyeball and they were blind and they began to see. But someone that never had eyeball, you know, like a socket, nothing there, that suddenly had balls pop out. God used my ush, a lady in the choir for that miracle. Not our pastor. That is spiritual adolescence. And God, the mistake we keep making is because we keep thinking that these things are reserved for the clergy. It's part of a lack of understanding. This sign shall follow those who are called to ministry. How many believers are here tonight? Wave your hand and say, I'm for signs and wonders. One of my sons that pastored him many years ago, he moved over to Canada. He's in Calgary. He called me and said his colleague, an Indian woman, had been suddenly she suffers from insomnia, insomnia, right? Not, uh, inability to sleep, right? Is that correct? Yeah. And she's not slept for days. Then it started getting into weeks. They tried everything. Conventional medicine wouldn't work acupuncture wouldn't work, all sorts of herbs and all sorts, nothing worked. So I said, she now told the lady, I said, please, oh, my pastor is coming to town. We're going to have a program. Can you come to church? Obviously. The lady said, yes. Every other thing has failed. And that's where we are going, ladies and gentlemen. The gospel now is about a gospel of Jesus showing up when every other thing has failed. And God will create avenues for us. He will create a venue where everything has failed. And they don't know what to do. Present you Jesus. When every other thing has failed and no one has a solution, nobody will refuse a Jesus. For them it will be one of the options. But if he walks, they will follow him. So I called him and said, yeah, sir, I've told her she's, she will come to church. Who are you waiting for? Is that how you were brought up? Is it Canada that made you cold? Who are you waiting for? Say, so go and lay your hands on her, my friend, and pray. I said, sir, ah, um, but if I drop the phone on him. So he went. Well, he didn't pray for the lady. Waited till I came to, to, to Calgary. Brought her to church. And I said, sir, this is the lady. I said, so what am I to do? He said, you pray for her. So he laid hands on her. And began to rebuke the spirit not content, that, that is refusing her sleep. Before he could pray for two minutes, the power of God hit the lady. This is just men's leader. The power of God hit the lady, the lady who was there. So we all waited, hoping that she would get up. Or they started hearing her snore. <laughs> she began to sleep. They carried her into the car. She slept for a day and a half. If, but you see, the problem is a lot of us who love these stories. You want Jesus to use it for it, but you refuse the responsibility. You want to still keep that person who hurt you in your heart and yet be anointed by God. 
You want to remain in your lies. And yet, God to make a way. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. And you shall love him with all your heart and your soul. Brethren, what you need really for God to use you is not too much of fasting and prayer. It is first of all a heart of diligent obedience that has translated into deep love for God. Fasting and prayer only sharpens where you are. It cannot get you to places. It sharp, if you are level 5, it will sharpen you at level 5. So that at level 5, you'll be, very, you'll be the most effective. But it doesn't translate you to level 10. It is your diligence. That's why you must have a pedigree of God. Your diligence in obeying God. In the little things. In loving him more than your own life. Brethren, we are in the middle of a revival already. It's not obvious. But God is setting things in motion. And it's not a revival that is church-based. It's community-based. God's going to use anyone and everyone willing and willing. We're going to see major miracles used by mere men on the streets. That's where we're going. If um, everything that happens, you are still calling Pastor Daniel or calling the assistant pastor. After 10 years in the Lord, something is wrong. Something is wrong. But now that you are 21, we write to you. You have benefits. What are the benefits you are mentioning, Pastor? <laughs> not, the, not the drinking one. What are the, what are the benefits are there? Uh, you can now... You can, thank you, ma'am. You can rent a car. But ma, even though you can rent a car, who will make sure that you don't have an accident with this? Oh, yeah. I have an accident with you. You now know that. <laughs> Anywhere there are benefits, there are responsibilities. Brother, we march as an army. Please go and study three things. Go and study Jesus before he took on flesh. Because a lot of us, because we don't understand the deep love, with which the extent of sacrifice. It is not possible for you to understand who Jesus was, what he left to come here to pay for your trouble. You need to understand who he was before he became who we know. You know, I used to think sir, that it was the father that so Jim, son, yeah, come and go. No. <laughs> when I studied my Bible for that, nah. Oh, no. You can't send someone that is equal to you. You can't. No. He's God. He's not less God than the Father. Is he trying God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, no. The father had a concern. The judgment of the father was on man. How do we set man free? So the father kind of asked the question, as it were, who shall we send? Who we go for? That question wasn't addressed to angels, sir. Why should you be asking who shall we send to people who are you, whom you design to be messengers? If God wants to send an angel a message, eh, hey, Gable, come. Mickey, not your own. <laughs> Make it come. And he will send them on errands. Because that's what they are designed for. You won't ask a question, and uh, which one of you will I send to Lagos? No. Jesus volunteered. Philippians 2. Let's stop here. Philippians chapter number 2. Let's read from verse 5. Three things I challenge you to go and study further. One, the, the revelation of who Jesus is before he came to the earth will make you fall in love. Obedience will become seamless. Obeying Jesus will become, loving Jesus will become seamless. 
You don't tell a man who loves Jesus, you don't cajole them to do things for God. That's the least they can do. They see it as a privilege. Anyone who is serving and who thinks they are doing the pastor or God a favor have not come to a level of understanding yet. The greatest honor God can give any man is to give him something to do for him. Let this mind be in you, fountain of fulfillment, which was also Christ Jesus. Keep going. Who, being in the, did not consider it robbery to be, because he is equal with God. Bible is saying here, he didn't just announce himself to be equal with God. He is God. Before he showed up, he was called the word. Don't forget, in the beginning was the, and the word was with, and the word was, the word was, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness. Darkness comprehends over it, not verse 14. And the word became flesh. Uh, and dwelt amongst us. We beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He is totally God. But read verse 7. Now, please, let's read with joy. Won't you read, please? Hold on. But, but, Jesus chose not that the Father had made him. Jesus himself chose to make him. It wasn't the father that made him that. He chose, made himself of no reputation. That was the first level of drop. In other words, even though he be God and is equal with God, he stripped himself of what made him, makes him God, even though he's God. Taking the form of a and coming in the likeness. Now read verse 8. Verse 8. And being found, he was he coerced. He decided. Brethren, the drop is sharp. And don't forget, please, it was not God who lost man. It was man who lost God. When you understand this, that he had to humble, he dropped less of what made him God. That's why he said in John 17, when he was about to die, pray to the Father, Father, now glorify your son as I've glorified you. What you told me to do, I've done. All right? Now, sir, um, after this whole thing, restore to me the glory I had with you, not in you. So when he came on the earth, oh, we see his miracles, brother, signs, wonders. Walking on water. But I don't know if you sit down with Jesus. Go and study Jesus again. Your life will change. That's what you're going to need. What you are receiving tonight will take an understanding of Jesus in these three dimensions for you to operate effectively. Who is responsible to study? You. If all you know in your Bible study or your knowledge of Bible is only what Pastor Daniel teaches you, what is you have been taught in this church or what you listen to from men of God, your life is in danger. Find God for yourself. Know him for yourself. And brethren, Bible says God is no respecter of persons.
Do you think, sir, your neighbor whose child had done gagas and they have prayed and done everything and gone to rehab, gone to blah, 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 or the child has been on drugs, they've done all sorts, and you just have an impression. Let me just go and pray. Can, I, can we agree together? Can we pray together for your son? And you prayed and something happens. They won't ask you which church you attend. What we have couldn't fix. I was in Dublin Island. One of the dick, one of the uh, dickiness, Caucasian woman. She had a son. The son had been on drugs for years. Everyone. God picked her out that day. God spoke into her life. And I said, please bring the son on Sunday. He said he doesn't come to church. I said, no, except it's not God who spoke. Don't, don't just tell him you are coming to church. Don't say I invite you to church. You know when God is in motion, don't apologize for authority. Uh -uh. You are not, uh, you are, God is not. And if it is God who spoke, then bled them. <laughs> the Bible says God has spoken once. How many do you hear? Twice you heard it. Their power belongs to God. So don't tell him that, oh, please, will you come to church? No, 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 no. He said, I've been begging. No, no, this one. Tell him you are coming to church. The boy came. Why? Because it was God who spoke. Choir was still singing. Power of God moved. Hit the boy. The demon cried out. The guy got up. We were the one that gathered money to pay for. He said he wants to go and enroll in Bible college. As I speak to you, he's a minister of the gospel in Ireland. What am I saying, brethren? Until your new age demands that you become an agent of change. Angma, sir, everything that Jesus did in the flesh. Everything. Besides the transfiguration. Everything, every miracle he did, he did as man. He actually came to show us what is possible for us in the flesh. Came to show all of us. So it's no big deal that Jesus calmed the storm. You can calm the storm. I still know somebody who, who redirected Tornado last week. He was heading, said no, go right. He went right. There's no big deal in this thing, brethren. This is our life. But you know what? Compromise does not allow the assurance and the revelation of who God is. Why do you have boldness to say these things? I know that more than I know, I be touching myself, that Jesus is a real man. He's alive. He's well. He is who he says he is. That's why living a sinful life destroys that witness. Weakens it. So you don't have boldness towards God. Another thing the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the only one. Thank you, sir. I think I came with one. I've forgotten it there. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is the only one. Who will help you see yourself the way God sees you? No other person can. Thank you so much for In Jesus' name, receive it. The Holy Spirit is the only one who will help you see yourself the way God sees you, not the way you see yourself. If you look at a Gideon, ah, the mighty man of valor, uh, angel, we are only two here now. Who are you talking to? He said, it's you. I told you there's a version of you with nothing. And it's about to burst forth. Yeah. We'll be praying. There's only one caveat, brethren. If you've not made up your mind not to consciously live in especially sexual sin, no allow me to lay hands on you. But if you have, oh, please feel free. You know, by now you should know the honor of grace that God works with you. I think it was in Calabar I was. We were having a meeting and suddenly the large church was a provincial headquarters or something. 
And it was a night video. And the Lord told me clearly while we were preaching that I should lay hands on everyone. Almost 2,000 plus. Lord, lay hands. <laughs> I'm going to need laying on my hands after. So, so I told everyone, I can't remember the last time I did that. So I told everyone, I said, this is what the Lord instructed me. There's only one problem, please. If you've not made up your mind, not to consciously walk in sexual sin, especially. Do allow me to lay hands on you. I repeated myself times. Not long after then, you know Nigeria now, I still sensed in my heart that folks would not, they would think this is just another joke. So I said, I'm going to sing a song. Alright? If you fall into that category and you're not ready, it doesn't make you bad. You're just not ready for it now. Alright? It doesn't please. It doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you less a child of God. You are just not ready for it now. While I, while I sing the song, just dance to the door. <laughs> and you know Nigerians, even while we were singing, all of us were watching, who is going to dance to the door? <laughs> Over the left and after everything, there was no noise. There's a, the dimension of that noise, the Bible says you will not see the wind, you will not hear the rain. Yet the valley will be full of water. Lay it on everyone left for my hotel room. I was on my way to the hotel. When the pastor called and said, Pastor, you have to come back. I come back to what? He said, ah, there's trouble. One lady in the choir, not the choir, one lady in the choir who had had an appointment with her boyfriend before she came to church. She wasn't going there to do anything, no. She just, the guy promised her some money and she wanted to go collect the money. They were still hugging when she went mad. I'm, I'm the Lord bear witness. It was the boy that held her because she ran to the streets. <laughs> it was the boy that, that held her, brought her to church. She had gone. So the pastor said, I have to come back. I said, no, you're her pastor. <laughs> I finished my own work. <laughs> Brother, they prayed there all night until 7 a.m. in the morning before she got herself back. So please, I crave your indulgence and I say again, one more time. If you've not made up your mind that you're not consciously, mind my words, please, consciously huh? engage in sexual sin in particular, don't allow me to lay hands on you, I beg you. Another one that is as dangerous, but not as dangerous as the first one, is this anointing will remain latent if you have unforgiveness. In other words, you not enjoy the benefit of it. All right? None of us have a right to hold anyone in our hearts if Jesus forgive us. The third aspect of your reading, I've told you, pre-incarnate Jesus, incarnate Jesus, and the post-incarnate Jesus. The Jesus uh, that we call upon now, the Jesus we call upon now, that sits at the right hand of God, is not the same one that Satan was trying to tempt to. No. It's not the one that was walking on water. No. The one that was walking on water, that was whatever, that Satan was tempting and they were pushing around and beating, that one was on his way to conquering. He had not conquered yet. <laughs> he was on his way to... At what point did he conquer? When he died and resurrected. In fact, he conquered at resurrection. The resurrected Jesus is not in the same light. It's not the one that people think because Satan said, if you are the son of God, Satan can't talk to this one now. He can't come close. Let us close. Revelation and chapter number one. Stand to your feet, people. Let's pray. Rising up.
of the soul to the city. Just a keyboard for now. God bless you, my brother. Don't worry, we'll come in later. No, no, no singing. Just put it. Okay. No singing yet. Just all the microphones yet. Just the keyboard play. Revelation and chapter number one. Let's start from verse 12. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Hey, your name is to be hallowed. I, I, I do not. Now listen, please. When you are praying to Jesus, don't look at him. It's not. It, this is. These are the things we can only discuss with adults. Because by now, brethren, you should be handling the serious things of the spirit. Because any time we pray, we always think that Satan is like God is powerful, though. like Satan is powerful, but Jesus is more powerful than him. That's an insult. That is an insult. It is an insult. And Satan wants us there. That ah, set, get down a bit. Bring down your volume. In fact, I think where we come from, Pastor, they said Satan has power, he only doesn't have salvation. Nonsense. Part of the lies of the devil we are peddling on his behalf. Which power? When Jesus rose, all power in and what's the meaning of all please after all what remains why can't you can't we stay with where scripture puts it all power not some there's nothing left there's nothing left but two immutable things for which it is impossible for God to lie if he said all it is all all power in heaven and on earth in my hands but we are stuck with the jesus born in the manger the picture you have is that guy who needed help and they had to smuggle into egypt and the one set up took to the pinnacle and said if you are son of god throw yourself down oh no that's not my revised Jesus. That is the one on the earth on his way to conquering. But I bring you, brethren, a, an understanding of the one who we call upon now. The one that is Jesus in our mouth. The one seated by the right of the Heavenly Father. When you want to hear the inner gist about anybody, look for people who are closest to him. In other words, I can't know if you're a real man of God. Only your wife can tell me. And to an extent, your children. If you want the inner gist about Jesus, there are three people that are closest to him. What's their name? Peter, James, and John. Now, of the three, which one of them was the closest to him? John. John was the closest. I feel God's power here tonight. John was the closest to him, man. John. Now, John was the last of the disciples to die. In case you don't know, the gospel according to John is the last book to be written in the Bible. John wrote three books. Revelation was the first one. After that, he wrote the three letters. First John, second John, third John. To the churches. To the brethren. Then the last one. That's why he gave a different perspective of Jesus other than other, from others. He didn't give a historical breaking down. He exhibited and projected Jesus' divinity. Not his humanity. Why? It wasn't because he wanted to be different. He was writing from the experiences he has had. The same one, you know, at, there was a time that Jesus said, one of you that will betray me. And all of the disciples, but you need to read it in Mark. All of them said, Lord, is it I? 
<laughs> you need to meditate on scripture. All of them said, is it, is it I? See, the truth is this. What the devil suggested to Judas, he suggested to all of them at different times. Only Judas allowed this stay. Because if you are saying, someone, one of you here wants to kill me, and I've never thought of it before, will I ask you, is it me? <laughs> All of, see, that's why you can't, don't feel sorry for Judas. The same temptation that Satan showed the idea to all of them. All of them. They're saying one after the other, Lord, is it I? Is it I? It's like saying, somebody stole meat in the pot. If you've not been to the kitchen, are you? <laughs> <laughs> because everybody thought it was fish they cooked but you are the only one who knew I didn't take the meat oh. all of them said sir is it I Peter now signaled to him John you are the closest to him bro ask him now bros bros they ask him so that he will tell us huh? so Jesus the Bible says John now leaned on the chest of Jesus and said, Lord, who is it? And Jesus said, no problem. To be a sign. I'm going to take the bread and dip it in the soap. Whoever I give it to is the person. So the Bible says he took the bread, dipped it in the soap, and gave it to Judas. Immediately Judas ate it. So I'm sure Peter was saying, Bros J, who now? <laughs> uh, master never tell you. John said, don't tell me, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> say, wait now. It didn't pass me. <laughs> and Peter was a Yoruba man. Not where they come from, up with ground, no collector. I beg to talk about which one. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, come on. Can you imagine the intimacy? Some miracles you see in John, you'll not see in any gospel like turning water to wine there were things the woman at the well samaria there were things peculiar to john god jesus brought john to see some things that others didn't see small wonder when he was about to leave he said mother behold your son son behold you did you notice that john was not active in the act of the apostles while peter's shadow was healing the sick and they were going everywhere doing signs and wonders the only time we heard of John was either that they gathered together to pray or he and Peter were going together to the temple at the time of prayer, the beautiful gate. He was taking care of a woman for 40 years. Forty years he was taking care of Mary. Mary died AD 69. A year before Titus came and destroyed Jerusalem, AD 70. But now, sir, the Jesus that he knew, Jesus had now resurrected. Now, let me show you the one who had conquered. Let's read about this same John now saw his best body and he couldn't recognize him. Then I turned to see the voice of, the, this is John speaking, the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden stars lampstand run 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 we're going to verse 18 and in the midst of the seven lampstand one like the son of man in other words he looks like jesus but brethren it is different same face but something is different keep reading clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden hand keep running his head and his hair were white like wool as white as snow i feel like crusade tonight and his eyes like a flame of fire Whoa. <laughs> his feet were like fine brass as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters keep reading verse 16 he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp to a dead sword and his countenance was like the sun the Jesus we call on today do you know a lot of us are still blocked with the one that walked on Galilee I love that man of Galilee. Ah uh ah. -uh. Oh no. 
This is him now. Since he resurrected, this is him. Guess what, brethren? Now, he, the best thing, see, the only way sometimes you can reckon except by divine revelation, the only way we can reckon with God's greatness are through the things he created. This was the best way I could explain it. His brightness, man. <laughs> I call him enormous, Rara. His brightness, brethren. Hey, let me say this. If Jesus shows up here tangibly, in a tangible form, without turning down his glory, all of us will be incinerated. Now, I didn't say we'll die. There will be no bone to collect. We'll be incinerated. The Bible says his countenance was like the sun shining. Another version says at his brightest. Verse 17. And when I saw him, when his best body saw him. Brethren, please help me read now. I ask. Now hold on. If his children stand before him and they feel like dying what is the lot of his enemies when they stand before him jesus brethren jesus you are thinking there's something jesus can't do you are thinking there's some situation he can't change you are thinking that that household enemy that spiritual stronghold over your life god can't fix it you don't know my jesus But he laid his head hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last verse, 18, the last verse. No, please, let's read with joy. Want to read? I am he. Hold on, hold on. Something is not grammatically correct in that statement. Please, when you read your Bible, chill. Take a chill pill. Don't rush. You will miss it. You will have passed your breakthrough while studying. Don't read it so that God will not be upset you've not read your Bible today. Something is not grammatically correct. It says, I am he who and and behold what should be the right thing i am he who was dead you say past present and future not jesus is interested in you knowing more of the present than the past he wants you to have a revelation of who he is now the one that is is past the one you know on the earth is so that you understand how he got here I am he who is alive. Ha! Oh, brother, he's alive. Yeah. It is not a prayer. He is alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, Amen. Now he says, And I do what? Come on. Fountain of fulfillment. And. And, and, I have the keys of hell, and, oh, don't get me started here. So, who has the key of death? Jesus. Ma, who has the key of death? Jesus. Why are you afraid you die? It's because you don't know who has the key. If your father is the one that has the key. Brethren, at a level of relationship with Jesus, revelation becomes ordinary. You, it's the Holy Spirit. You will know it. He's more real to you than any existence. 
death. Death. <laughs> if only you know that death itself is a servant. Bible now says the last enemy. Let's stop. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews 2 14. I said let's stop. We're still cutting. Run my brother. Please with joy. Everyone read. Want to read. In as much then as the children of he himself likewise shared in the same that he might destroy him who 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 present tense who has it now who had it before so why do you pray when he says i will kill you because you don't know he doesn't have the key kill who if hell was satan's house which means he doesn't even have the key to his own house the key of hell is with who jesus but hell is not his house hell is his eternal prison a lot of people think satan will have time for for them in hell to punish them no he will be suffering his own he won't have time for anybody hell is not his house he's not commander in chief there it is his eternal prison hell was built by jesus Hell is owned by Jesus. The devil you are dealing with today is not the same in the texture of the one that tempted Jesus. Nah. That one had the key of hell and death. Huh? That one had power which he confessed that was handed over to him he had it but he lost everything colossians chapter 2 let's bring this home colossians 2 give me verse 14 haven't wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you and you and you and you and you which was contrary to us he has taken them where and he has nailed them where so if the devil is saying he has an official letter an agreement that your father's 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 made with him uh, and say because of that you are liable what will you tell him no, you see. <laughs> this tells me that that copy he has is not the original. Where's the original? On the cross. Original is on the cross. So the one he's carrying about is Oluwale, we call it. Why have you been fasting and prayer, praying on them? An illegitimate document. Next verse as we close. This just brings joy to my heart all the time. Woo! Heaven! Principalities! Now, excuse me. What does it mean to disarm? No, 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 no. Okay, let's go to warfare. All right. So we have our AK for no AK for which one are proper guns? Okay, AR-15. I don't know why I think I should ask you. <laughs> AR-15 and all of those other guns. What did the Bible say? He had disarmed for a gun to walk. It needs the gun itself 
and he needs ammo. Okay, Englishman call it bullet. In America, we call it ammo. He needs ammo. What Jesus did was to collect all the ammo. Every ammo he collected. Now, Satan still has a gun. That has no. So he comes and says, Hey, your life for your money. Say, I, I, they talk to us here. Don't argue with a man that has a gun. So he said, ah, That's why he keeps convincing people that he still has power. But the ones that know, Shakabula. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. If someone had been holding you <laughs> to ransom uh, because of a gun, and you actually think, or because, I mean, you assumed <laughs> there's ammo in it, the day you discover. <laughs> 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 the day you discover <laughs> that what <laughs> there is <laughs> you will now know you are not holy <laughs> you will beat <laughs> you will beat silly <laughs> on the guy <laughs> that's the day you see man of god fight <laughs> i will handle him first i'll pull him give him a headbutt we we'll start from there but that should be your response to all these lies not see in scripture where the bible calls him the afflictor of brethren bible does not call him the tormentor of the brethren what does it call him all he has left that's why you must not listen to him and you'll always have an ear to hear him if you are not filled with the word of god There is nothing God created that is absolute. There is a better version of you. Oh, this church needs you, every one of us to arise. Miracle workers. But when Jesus walks, you can't argue it. You can't gain say. Lift up your hands tonight. Respond to Jesus based on what you heard. Lord, I don't want to live life at this level anymore. I receive spiritual impartation and, and spiritual empowerment tonight. I'm not going to operate at the same level anymore. When they were leaving Egypt, God bankrolled their deliverance. When they were in the wilderness, God was the one that was feeding them day and night. The moment it's time to enter the promised land, ladies and gentlemen, all God gave them was instruction. They were the one who crossed the, the Jordan themselves intervention gave way to instruction you are now at the realm of instruction brother what you do with it is left to you get back to your bible go and sit down study all over again ask the holy spirit to open your eyes and your heart tell him to endure you with power and grace can you ask him tonight and say father fill my heart with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you Ask him, talk, 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 pray. Ask him. Oh Lord, thank you. Be sure tonight, no condition in your body should go back home with you. If you understand what Jesus has said tonight, no condition in your body must go back home with you. No condition must go back home with you. They dissolve in the pool of the blood of the Lamb. Now, please, it's important for you to commit 
to your responsibility for your spiritual growth your spiritual life is the most important part of your existence it's not the only one but the most important one you must commit and dear lord i'm going to study to look for you lord you're going to use me for your glory you will use me for your glory you will use me to set my family free you will use me lord to help my neighbor you will use me to be a solution quiet and say lord use me use me for your glory fill me with an anointing tonight Ushers, I'm going to need you. So I think it's better for us to come. Do we come this way? So I just want to, okay, this way, right? Where do we start from? You, you, you lead me here. We start from here. All right then. Okay, please, can you, can you please just direct and I will just stand here. Yeah. 